December's done. We have to talk about what I read in December. Hi, my name is Jeanette, and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. So, as you can probably tell, I am fighting laryngitis at the moment. <laughs> I was really sick the week of Christmas, and then thankfully I got over that part of the sickness and the cold and the voice. Since Friday and today's Tuesday. <laughs> Insane when I'm filming this. But anyways, but I wanted to get this done because December's done. We have to talk about what I read in December before I can like do my yearly wrap up and stuff. So I do have a cup of tea here in my nice Kentucky Horse Park mug. I love this mug. Other than it can't go in the dishwasher and it can't go in the microwave. So that really limits me using it but tea is perfect. And I am not a big tea drinker, but my throat doesn't hurt. It's just my voice. <laughs> and you, as you can tell, it's going in and out. I actually had a really good reading month and I really wasn't expecting to because when I was sick, there was two whole days I did not read anything. But other than that, I ended the year really well. I read three books in three and a half days. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, so the first book I'm going to talk about is a DNF. I DNF'd The Pelican Brief by John Grisham. And the reason I DNF'd it, I got to page 90 approximately. So, I mean, I got a good way in. And it just had content that I was not comfortable reading. There were references to men groping and fondling each other in a movie theater. There was talk of sex between a professor and a student. Um, and it just, I'd had enough. 90 pages, I'm like, eh, I'm not doing this, no. So this one is going to be unhauled. Okay, so let's, I'm just gonna go in the order that I read them or the order that I finished them. So, The Prince of Spies by Elizabeth Camden. This is book three of the Hope and Glory series. And so now I have finished the series, thankfully. So we meet Luke in book one and kind of get to know a little bit of his story. And then it carries over in book two and book three. Now he is the main character and his story is wrapped up. And then we do meet a new character, Marianne. I really loved the character of Luke. And the determination he had to do what he believed in even when it was hard. I learned so much about a point in time that I had no idea about, like a point in history that I just had no idea about um, and the impact that it has on the food or had on the food industry now. And I, that was really interesting but I didn't connect with these characters as much as I was hoping to connect with them or as much as I expected to connect with them because in book, well, one, it was just, it was Luke's story I wanted to know. And I loved book two, but book three was, it was okay. Like I enjoyed, I liked having the wrap up and we saw a little bit of the other two, like the characters from the other two books, but I gave this book four stars cause I did really enjoy it and kind of, I learned a lot, but I didn't, like I wasn't, on board for the relationship as much as I kind of might have hoped to be. Then I finished Life Everlasting by Robert Whalow. I listened to this one on audiobook and it is book two of the Alex Lindale series and it features Ted who is a music minister and he is doing a music ministry with Baxter who has recently come out of a coma but is paralyzed and in private nursing at his or getting private nursing at his cottage and so Ted goes and plays music for him with the private nurse that is there and they're just hopefully the music touches him in a way and heals him it was really interesting and I thought those scenes were done really well I loved the faith that was invested in this book what I did not like about this book I hated the way it ended I was like, that was it? What? Like, what? I just, not a fan. Not a fan. It And the last 
two chapters probably like there's a scene we're following like kind of day-to-day -day lives and then all of a sudden it jumps in time and it was like wait what did I miss what and then it ends and it was like well what happened to this and this and this I was left with so many questions but I gave it three stars because I was invested in the story and getting interested but then that ending was like what so yeah Okay, then I read The Letters by Suzanne Woods Fisher. This is an Amish fiction book, and I don't read a ton of Amish fiction. I haven't read one for quite a few years. And the book started with so many different points of view. I was like, who is who? What? Like, I felt like I had missed something and didn't know. And so we are following Rose, who is the mother of four kids, maybe five kids. Now I'm, no, I think it's four. I'm pretty sure it's four. And so she is living with her mother-in-law after her husband has passed away. And so there's kind of questions brought up about what caused her husband's death. And I thought, well, maybe that's going to be resolved and looked into it. Not at all. Didn't really. And then there she is trying to make an income for herself for the family so she decides to open this B&B &B at her place and then I thought okay we're gonna get interactions with the B&B &B guests and stuff but then it's like one lady comes and stays and there's very little interaction between Rose and the lady that's staying and I'm like I don't know where this book's going like I was just I was very confused a lot of the time and because it was so many different points of view, I tried to figure out who was who and what their part of the story was. Now there was one point of view, which was not the main character, whose storyline I really cared about and wanted to know more. And it was like, I could have read about her the whole way through the book and been invested. But because it kept switching to the other ones that I just didn't care about. So I gave this book three stars because while I cared about some of it, I didn't care about a lot of it. <laughs> then I read Log on Ice by Carolyn Miller. This is book number two of the original six hockey series. And so we had met the two main characters that are in this book in book one. So they are the best friend and the brother of one of the characters from the first book. So it was like, okay, this is cool. I want to know. I've met them. I know these characters. And because it's a best friend and a brother, it's like they're, we're going to get to see the characters from the first book a lot because of the relationship that she has with these two characters, right? This was really enjoyable. And it really, like, it made me, it, we are, so <laughs> I should start at the beginning. We are following Holly who is a speed track skater and Brent who is a hockey player and so they meet and we're so we're following the two of them now we don't follow Brent in his hockey career as much as maybe I would have liked to but we are really invested in Holly and her speed skating she is trying to get to the Olympics so she is going through like worlds world finals and stuff right now and trying to qualify for the Olympics and the scenes at the competitions I felt like I was watching the Olympics like it just it was like oh is she gonna make because speed skating dangerous sport very dangerous sport and I mean I knew it was a dangerous sport before because I watch it all the time on the Olympics and but the way it's detailed in this book I was she gonna be okay. She gonna be okay. Like it just, I felt like I was there watching it and on the edge of my seat that she wasn't gonna get injured. Like it was just, hmm. And then the relationship and how they communicate back and forth. I just, I really enjoyed this story. So I give this what four stars because I was really invested in the relationship. And yes, we do get to spend time with the main characters from book one as well. So I did enjoy it. I just didn't love it as much as I kind of expected to love it. And I think that's because there wasn't as much of Brent and his hockey. Um, I think that's the only thing. 
and I mean majority because she's Australian and he is Canadian but playing in the States. So there's a huge time difference between the two of them. So a lot of the communication is over emails back and forth, which I also really do enjoy. But I think it's just, you, there's not a lot of time that they're actually together. So yeah. Then I read The Bridge by Karen Kingsbury. I say that because this has been a long awaited book read for me from my best friend. And a year later, I finally read it. <laughs> Only took me a year. I have seen the movie before I read this book and I don't remember a ton of the movie but I remember enough especially the characters. Now the whole time I was reading this book I could easily picture Charlie and Claire and Donna. <laughs> I'm like I don't think that name's right. Um, from the movie. I just, I had them in my, my head the whole time. Now on the, the other couple or the other two characters, Ryan and Molly, I don't, I couldn't picture them as easily as I could with Charlie and Donna. And, but I mean, there's kind of a reason for that, I think, because the characters that play Charlie and Donna in the movie are the same characters that play Charlie and somebody else. I can't think of her. Maybe Hope? Faith? Mm, yeah. Um, there was a TV show where they played husband and wife. Oh, the TV show was called Hope and Faith. And they played husband and wife. And then they play husband and wife in this movie. So I think that, and I watch that show all the time when it was on, and then I watched the movie. So I think that's why the cop there stuck in my head whereas the younger couple were new to me actors when I watched the movie and I didn't yeah so anyways it doesn't really matter so in this book we are following Molly and Ryan and Charlie and Donna and Molly and Ryan were two college students who met and used to go to the bookstore the bridge every time for two years they were constantly there and Charlie runs the bookstore the bridge now we're going seven years later and the there's a flood that has happened in town and the bookstore is on has been closed for a while and he's trying to rebuild and then something happens and people kind of rally around but in that seven year gap Molly and Ryan have not spoken due to her leaving town she wasn't from that area and so she left town thinking one thing about Ryan and Ryan was left thinking something else about Molly now if they had talked at the time seven year gap could have been resolved and not gone with all these weird feelings but you know looking back right so then so they come together and rally they're part of this rally around the bookstore and Charlie and Donna and then so that was really sweet like I enjoyed that and kind of seeing a community come together and support but then the ending and it was like really really it just and it's Ryan and Molly's ending that I did not like I liked Charlie and Donna. I liked Charlie and Donna the whole way. And I really liked Donna. Charlie. Like, I just loved him. So I give this book four stars because I loved the idea of rallying around and what Charlie was trying to do and how he was using the bookstore to minister. I just didn't like the way it ended. So then the next book I read was Double Take by Lynette Eason. And this one releases this month, January the 9th, so just in a few days. And it is romantic suspense and it is the introduction to a new series that she's starting and Caitlin from Chronicles of a Book Nerd asked me if I wanted to buddy read it I'm like I've never buddy read anything but sure I'll give it a try so we buddy read this so we read it approximately around the same time and then we chatted about it which was really kind of I really enjoyed that because she made me think about some things that I hadn't really thought about and so that that was fun I would do that again and it was nice to kind of 
just chat about something that somebody's read, right? <laughs> okay. So when it starts out, I was asking questions. Is Lainey going crazy? Is Adam dead? Or is he alive? Like, what is going on? I was hooked on the mystery aspect. Hooked. I probably read this in three days. I could not put it down. And because I needed to know. I needed to know. My negative of this book is there were so many characters introduced at the very beginning and then trying to keep track of who was who and the, what the relationship was to Lainey or like kind of what their role was in the life. I was like, wow. And then there's another character and mentioned quite a bit and I'm just, but then like she's mentioned, but then there's no interaction. Like she's mentioned as if she's Lainey's best friend, but then there's very little interaction between Lainey and her. And I was like, what? Like I just found that, I don't know, that threw me off. <laughs> but there is one particular point in this book. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Where another author's work is mentioned. And I was like, mm, that's cool. Like she's reading that author's work. And I was like, that's so cool because I've read that author. I just, yeah, I loved that part. Um, the faith element in the story is very mild. There are mentions about trusting God, but it's very mild. Um, and so I did not really care about the romantic relationship of these characters. I really cared about the mystery, what was going on. And when it was revealed, I was like, oh, I, I just, I did not expect that. I did not expect that. So yes, I do recommend this book, Edge of the Seat, fast paced, very intriguing. I gave this book four stars because I just didn't care about the romantic relationship. If I had cared about the romantic relationship, this would have been a five for me. But yes, read this book. <laughs> Okay, then I just needed something light and sweet. So I picked up My True Love Gave to Me by Karen Whitmire. This is just a short story, 46 pages long. Not very long at all. I read it in, you know, a couple hours kind of thing. And it was, where it's a historical based on the 12 days of Christmas. So they, we've got a romantic relationship already formed between two characters. Simon starts giving Anna gifts based on the 12 Days of Christmas song. So, right, like a partridge in a pear tree, five golden rings, six geese land. But the way that he gives them and the kind of what he gives to represent that day, entertaining. And, but my favorite part of this book, or this, like, this read, was at the very, after the story ends, there's a devotional inserted about the birth of Christ and why he came as a baby. And I, when I read that, that just touched me so much, like, really got me thinking. I just, I think I preferred the devotion. The story was fun, but I'm so glad I got this for the devotional. Then... The next audiobook I finished was Before I Wake by Dee Henderson. This one, we are following Ray, who has recently left the FBI, and she is re coming to a town called Justice, Illinois, and she is going to be a private investigator with a former flame, Bruce. And they, Bruce is an ex-police officer who runs this private investigation company <laughs> business then we meet Nathan Justice who is the sheriff of the town Justice obviously he's part of the Justice family he so he grew up in this community and Nathan and Bruce are really good friends and so I really enjoy the way that Nathan and Ray first meet it's just that was entertaining Ray and Bruce are investigating some cases and a case that the police department has had to close because they have no answers, right? 
But meanwhile, there's a strike going on at town at one of the large factories. And so Nathan is trying to deal with, the, like the police force is trying to deal with the strike as well. So there's a lot of happening in the community. A lot of high tensions are running. And I was really invested in the story and really like trying to figure out the case that Ray and Bruce are working and wanting to know what is going on. Like, can they figure out what is happening? Why has this person died? And there's no answers. Why has this person died? And there's no, like, seems to be no answers of why. And so I was really invested in that. And then we get a couple sneak peeks from the villain's perspective and like told from point of views from the villain's perspective. And it was really interesting and got me like, okay, who is this? Like, because we, he's just talking, right? Or I assume it's a he. Um, they're just talking, but you don't, he's never said who they are, right? So I'm like, okay, can I figure out who this is before it's actually revealed? And then we get to the end and it ends. And it was like, what? Like, what? And I just, I, yeah. So the case is never wrapped up. They know what happened, but they don't catch the guy. And it's not a series. So there's no answers. And I'm just like, what? And then even, so we know Bruce has feelings for Ray. And Nathan has feelings for Ray. And, but Ray doesn't like, she's, she's unsure. She doesn't want to be in a relationship right now at all. But she's not like drawn to one more than the other, or it doesn't come that way. And then again, the book ends. And it, so we have no idea which guy she chooses. Does she choose a guy? I just, I was so, so frustrated when this book ended. That's what the third book that I was frustrated with the way it ended. <laughs> then I read Let It Be Me by Becky Wade. This is book number two of the Misty River series. And honestly, I was hesitant going into this book because I heard it featured a love triangle. And I am not a fan of love triangles. So we meet Leah Montgomery, who is a teacher, and Sebastian Grant, who is a doctor, and Ben Coleman, who is also a teacher. And so Ben and Sebastian are part of the Miracle Five kids that this series is kind of circled around. And then we meet Leah, who we know from book one, Ben has feelings for. And then we learn that Sebastian also has feelings for Leah, but they don't know that they have feelings for the same girl. And once they realize that the girl's the same, one of them backs off and says, no, I'm not going to. Like, not gonna pursue that. Then when the other guy learns that Leah has feelings for one, for one of them, for the other guy, like this can be very confusing because I'm not gonna tell you which couple, right? Like who the couple is. So basically one guy finds out that Leah has feelings for the other guy. And so he's like, okay. And then, you know, knowing that that guy has feelings for Leah, he encourages that guy, okay, go, puts his feelings aside and encourages it. I really like that because they're not both fighting over the same girl. Yes, there is a little bit of tension at moments, but they're honest about the tension and they talk it through. And so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed this book much more than I expected to, which, is saying a lot because I ran into it thinking, oh, I'm not gonna like this story. <laughs> and so, but then we're also following Leah has a mystery that it starts out with her parents aren't her parents. And she's now 20 years old and just learning this. And so she's trying to figure out like, why, what's going on? I did not like the mother in this book. Did not like her at all. And I mean, I don't think we're supposed to like her. <laughs> And kind of the, I just, mm, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. I loved the way this book ended. It is a romance and the way everything goes, 
yeah, I really enjoyed it. So then, I gave that one four stars, by the way. So then I picked up You and Me by Becky Wade, which is the novella 2.5, so it's in between book two and book three. I did not read the back of it, like the summary of this novella, thinking, oh, well, I know who it's going to be about, because it's about the character that didn't doesn't get the girl in book two. Nope, not at all. Not at all. Completely different characters. And I was like, oh, okay. I just, yeah. Now, if I'd read the summary, I would have known that because it says who it features. But, nope. I like to go into books most of the times without knowing the back summary. And sometimes I'm disappointed like that because I want to know that other guy's story. Or I want to know that he gets his happy ending. But I'll wait and see what happens in the next book. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this sweet read. I did not expect to because it's a novella. Novellas don't tend to do well in my book for me. Like just don't fit my need, <laughs> fulfill my needs <laughs> for once. <laughs> and so we are following these two characters. One approaches the other asking for dating advice. So then the other one tries to help them through knowing that they're trying to pursue a girl. But it's a mystery of who this girl is. And I was like, will you realize that it's you? When, how long will it take you to clue in that he is trying to get you? <laughs> so it was just, it was really sweet. She finally clues in. I just, I really enjoyed it. Okay, now, for story time. As if the rest wasn't stories, right? Okay. So then we're getting to the end of the month. I'm trying to complete my TPR bingo board. I have this, I have two books left in my bingo board. One is a book three of a series, one is book one of a series. And I'm like, okay, well, we're at the end of the month. We're on the 28th at this point, I think it is, 27th. No, probably 28. And so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll read book one. I was not, like, I kind of, I'd had this book on my Kindle since 2014. So I'd had it on my Kindle for nine years. I never picked it up. I was like, so I was, I didn't have high hopes for it. Hence, I was never drawn to it, never. So that book is Dangerous Passage by Lisa Harris. So in this one, we are following Avery Hunt, who is a police detective, and Jackson, I don't know Jackson's last name, who is a medical examiner. And Avery, Avery is working on a case where they have two Jane Doe's that both have tattoos of a mag magnolia flower on their shoulders. But they're both Jane Doe's, and how are they, the kind of the the way the bodies are discovered are very similar circumstances. Are these two cases connected or are they two individual? So she's trying to find that out. Now Avery is a single mother of a 13 year old or 12 year old and she lost her husband three years ago. He was a police officer, died in an accident and she has also lost her brother who is also a police officer in the last eight months I think it is. And so she is trying to investigate her brother's case because she doesn't believe what's going on. Like doesn't, the, there seems, there's a lot of questions around that case. And then there's everything going on with her current cases. And Jackson and Avery have been out on, I think two dates when the book first opens. And it's kind of like, okay, are we gonna go for the third date or are we not? But then because of everything going on in Avery's life, she's kind of like, I don't know if I have time to pursue a new relationship and deal with. Right? Like, can I dedicate every, like, you know, can I give people the right amount of attention she needs? I loved these two characters. Loved them. I was so, like, they just felt so realistic. And the way they interacted, like, it just, it felt very, very realistic. I loved it. And then we're following the case storyline. And we do get a point of view from one, from another perspective, 
who could be a potential victim. And so then we're like, okay, what is going on there? And it does get into dealing with human trafficking. So there is that possible trigger warning. And it was just like, oh, really? Like, as I'm reading, how can people do this? I just don't, I don't get the evil mindset and how people can justify treating other people this way. I just, I don't get it. And I mean, it's probably a good thing that I don't get it, right? But I was so invested in this story. So we have Avery and we also have her family dynamics. So her daughter, her sister, her mother and father. Then we've got the team that she leads at work. So the, the department team. And kind of, so we've got all the work life and family life and case life. Like, I just love the way this was written. There is one scene in this one, something happens and I was in tears. And it's not even like, it shouldn't have been. Like, it shouldn't have hit me as hard as it hit me. I, yeah, it really shouldn't have. And so while the main case does wrap up in this book and we kind of know kind of what's going to happen, like kind of where the relationship is going, not what's going to happen because we don't know that for sure, but where the relationship is headed between Avery and Jackson. And we've got the one case wrapped up, but the case that Avery's working on regarding her brother is not wrapped up. And it ends with another clue given and it was like and I was like hmm I I didn't expect to enjoy this book and I did and I don't or I did not own books two and three and I made the mistake I made the mistake of reading these summaries of books two and three to see kind of okay what's I just wanted a glimpse of what characters they featured and will I see Avery and Jackson again is all I really why I read the summaries and then I read the summary of book three and it was like I need to know how did we get from here to here so then I bought book two and book three and yeah I as I said I'd had this book for nine years and I had no idea I was gonna fall in love with this series or these characters so then I read book number two, which is Fatal Exchange. And in this one, we are following Avery's sister, Emily, who is the high school teacher. And her high school classroom has been taken hostage by a gunman, by a student. And we see Mason, who is another police detective, and he's trying to, he has a relationship with this student. And obviously he, he is the best friend of Avery, or Emily's brother that passed away and so the, they know each other as well right so there's history and so we are following that and kind of how is that gonna happen and the whole time I'm like why is he taken hostage like what is motivating this student and that's what the police are trying to figure out and I was so invested I read this book in a day I could not put it down I was so invested in the characters and the storyline and the action. I loved this book. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not gonna say any more about it because I don't wanna, it is book two, I don't wanna give spoilers. And so I can say very, very little about book three because it would totally spoil book one. So this is Hidden Agenda is book three. I, this is the one that I have to read book two so I can get to this one and get some answers. I did not expect to enjoy book two as much as I did because I was just going to read it to get to this book. Yeah, this book was a let down for me. I just did not connect with it with the main characters as much as I expected to. I did get some answers. So I mean that was positive. I did get some answers, but I just did not ex connect with the characters as much. And I think it's because I just, it just, the rom the romantic relationship felt long to me. Like it just, way too quick, way too deep on what they're dealing with at the moment. It just, hmm, takes some time. 
you can't be there yet because you're dealing with this and this. And so I'm not going to say the character's names because, as I said, it would break. It would kind of give away for book one. This is a series that really must be read in order, one, two, three, because book three, you're getting answers from kind of the case in book one. And what I really enjoyed about the series is we're following the Hunt family. So the mother, the father, the two sisters, and then we hear about the brother, right? So they are the main characters the whole way through. But then Avery's police work team is also the main characters throughout the whole thing. So that I loved the continuity continuity of that and they pick up I think book two picks up four months after book one but then book three picks up like a week two weeks after book two so like they're really close together in timeline between them so I really enjoyed that I highly recommend this series especially for book one and book two and then you're gonna want to read book three because you want answers and book three has a ton of action. Like on the action side of it, I really enjoyed that. And the case and can they can they solve the case? It's just the character relationship took it down for me. So that is what I read in December. So as I said, it's 13 books, really kind of 12 because the short story, maybe 11 because of the novella, but it doesn't matter. I read a lot <laughs> more than I expected to. And now my throat hurts. <laughs> so yeah, I read a lot on my Kindle apparently because I only have four here. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so my favorite read of the month, shockingly enough, was a book I hadn't even I didn't even own at the beginning of the month. My favorite read was *Fatal Exchange* by Lisa Harris, which is book two of the *Southern Crimes* series. What was your favorite read from December? Did you read a lot of Christmas stuff or just generic? I think I read, well, really Christmassy. But You and Me, also the, the novella from the Becky Wade series, is also set around Christmas time. So I guess I read two Christmas. Well, no, I read three because the My True Love Gave to Me was a Christmas themed. So there, I read three. Then I read Romantic Suspense because that's what I love to read. <laughs> I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today and I hope that kind of my up and down voice didn't really bother you too much and my drinking tea but hopefully I can get rid of whatever this is and be back in kind of regular form <laughs> going forward. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.